Welcome back, everyone. It's been a bit and a half since the last guy video, but I am back now, and I am excited to teach you how to play Horus Heresy. Now, just a warning for newcomers. This video will not be covering special rules or army abilities, just the basic concepts and rules. So that way, you know what's going on if you are just starting to learn, or if your friend's talking about it to you. As well, Horus Heresy is meant to be a bigger game than 40k, so the size of the armies might be a bit daunting to you. However, I believe in you. So, let's get into it. Okay, before we get on the table, first you'll need a tape measure that measures in inches, as all Horus Heresy measurements are in inches. You also need a lot of six-sided dice, depending on the size of your army. And also, these things called templates. These are for weapons that have an area of effect like flamethrowers, grenades, and bigger AoE weapons. If you got the Age of Darkness box set, you would have gotten most of these things. If you haven't, GW sells all these things so you aren't screwed if you are playing on a budget. It's overwhelming. I need time. Time to adjust. Time to- Ready, bring us now! <laughs> you weren't ready. Uh -oh. Now, onto the table. You and your opponent, after deciding what mission and the deployment map you will be playing, you and your opponent both roll a six-sided die to decide who deploys first. The winner, whoever rolls highest, gets to pick who deploys first. Then you and your opponent will follow deployment rules based on the mission you two decide on. Or if the mission doesn't have deployment rules, the winner will set up their entire army, then the loser will set up their entire army after you do. Whoever lost the deployment roll then has a chance to steal the first turn by rolling a natural 6. If they roll a natural 6, they get the first turn instead. But if they don't, the game continues on as normal. Now, let's get into the phases of a turn. I will now continue to use the horn until you politely move! Every unit in the game has a movement stat. Models can only move as many inches as their movement stat sets. During your movement phase, you can have your units do one of three things. Move, advance, or remain stationary. If you choose to advance a unit, you will look at the stat on your unit sheet called Initiative, or I. You add the lowest initiative of the unit to that unit's movement when that unit advances. They can't fire any weapons or make a charge action unless specified otherwise by an army ability or special rule. Once all your units have been moved, or you choose to hold them still, you will go into your shooting phase. Kaboom? Yes, Rico. Kaboom. The shooting phase is pretty simple. Any unit that is eligible to shoot, can. You must declare which unit is shooting, and all models in that unit must fire on the same target. When your unit shoots, you will look at the ballistic skill of your unit and apply it to the chart shown on screen. If you roll a number that is equal to or higher than the number stated, you hit. If you roll under it, you miss. Then, after hits and misses have been resolved, you will roll to wound. Compare the weapon's strength to the target's toughness. If they're equal, you wound on fours. If it's one step above, it's threes. If it's a step above that, it's twos. But if the strength is weaker than the toughness, then it's fives or sixes. However... Vehicles are a bit different, so... Arthur, get out of the tank. Get out of my dad. Get out of the fucking tank, I am your dad. Get out of my dad. Vehicles in 30k don't have a toughness stat like they do in 40k. Instead, they have armor values. When you try to damage a vehicle after you hit, you take the strength of the gun and roll a d6 and add the number you roll to the strength of the gun. If the total is equal to the target's armor value, you do a glancing hit. If the total is larger, you penetrate the armor. Both things cause one point of damage, but a penetrating hit has an added d6 table. Roll the d6 and just apply the effect you rolled to the vehicle. One more thing. Armor penetration does not work the same way in 40k. In 40k, AP subtracts from the target's armor save, listed as the SV on the stat sheet. But in Horus Heresy, if the AP is equal to or lower than the save, then the target does not get to roll an armor save to negate the damage. If the AP is higher than the save, the target gets to roll a save. When attacking vehicles, if the AP of the attack is 2 or 1, you get to add a 1 or 2 to the D6 result for the armor penetration. Armor save resolves the same way they do in 40k. Now, 
Moving on to the assault phase. Now, so long as your unit didn't advance during the movement phase and your unit is within 12 inches of its target, you can declare a charge. When you make a charge, you roll 2d6 and then measure the distance towards your target. If the roll equals or exceeds the distance needed, you succeed the charge. However, if the unit rolls below the distance needed, you cut the number you rolled in half and move that many inches towards the target unit, and then that sequence ends. If your unit makes it into melee combat, you and your opponent look at your respective unit's initiative, and whoever has the highest initiative gets to go first, then work your way down. When making a melee attack, you compare the weapon skill of the attacker to the weapon skill of the defender. The same logic applies as wounding. If they're equal, you hit on fours, one step higher is threes, etc. And if it's lower, it's the same as well. Then you roll to wound as normal. After all combats have finished, you and your opponent check to see how many models were lost in each combat. The one who lost the most wounds in combat loses, and is forced to roll a morale check. For a morale check, roll 2d6 again, and if you roll below or equal to your leadership stat, your unit passes. If you roll above your stat, you fail and your unit flees the fight towards your table edge. However, you and your opponent roll off again using each of your initiative stats. Whoever rolls the highest wins, and if the unit fleeing loses, they are wiped out in a sweeping advance. If they win, the fleeing unit makes a full movement towards its friendly table edge. Once all the leadership tests are done, the player whose turn it is will activate any abilities that activate here and score any points from objectives they hold or completed during their turn. Then the turn goes to the next player, and once both players have completed their turns, the round ends and the next round begins, following the same turn order as before. This game is fair as f Just to note a few things before we wrap up, certain things are important to know when playing the game. So, here's a quick list of set rules. 1. Should a weapon strength double the target's toughness, if the target fails even a single save, they instantly die. Their wounds drop to zero, no matter what. 2. Dreadnoughts are treated differently and follow these specific rules as shown here, so pause to read. 3. For psychic powers, a psyker has to roll a leadership check when casting. Should they pass, the spell goes off without a problem. But if they fail, the caster takes a peril of the warp attack, which means they take d3 wounds and can only use invulnerable saves to stop the damage. Finally, 4. If a vehicle is dragged into close combat and does not have a weapon skill, all attacks against it are considered to auto-hit. As well, if a unit was inside the vehicle when it was destroyed, any model getting out of the destroyed vehicle that cannot be outside of one inch of an enemy model is instantly destroyed as well. Must go. My planet needs me. I suspect he was high on narcotics. And that's the basics of how to play Horus Heresy. It's a bit more complicated than 40k and has a much smaller army pool to choose from, but it's a much larger game and is still really damn fun, all things considered. There are more advanced rules, but this video is only to teach you the basics so that way you and your friends can learn how the game plays, before you add in more advanced rules like reactions and such. So I hope this helps. The next guide will be on the Traitor Legions and their special abilities and units. If you want to watch it early, subscribe to my Patreon. If not, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.